Hi kids. Um, regular Mrs. Evans is back today. Not so scary, huh? Makeup does wonders for old people like me. <laughs> anyway, um, I am glad to feel better today. I'm very thankful and grateful that I do not feel sick um, today and I finally feel a little better. Still really tired, but making it. Okay. So um, you need to come by the school. If you have not come by and picked up your stuff yet, you need to do that because all of your work is in your packets and your notebooks and things that we're gonna be doing. Yes, there will probably be some things in Google Classroom, but this is all stuff that I need to teach you. So I need you to have your items. So you need to come by the school and pick those up. I am there from eight o'clock until 3.30 every day this week. So if for some reason your parent can't make it at that time, um, you might, uh, shoot me a text um, or an email and let me know that you need to come in the evening and I'd be glad to come up there and let you in to pick up the stuff. Okay, so we are gonna be still doing our Word Nerd, so it's important that you went and picked up your interactive reading notebook. And we're gonna be reading a story this week called Satchel Page, and it is a biography, which goes with our pumpkin biographies that we did. And so we will be doing a word each day that goes with the story. So let me flip the camera around and you will put this word in your word nerd. I think we're on week either 10 or 11. Um, and you need to write this word down and then you can look it up at home and you can either use your computer or your phone. Um, if you have a dictionary at home, that's fine too. If you don't, and then you can wait till tomorrow and I'll tell you what the word means and we'll go over it together, okay? So let me flip my camera around. Our first word is segregation. Let me let you look at that. Okay. And that word is going to have something to do with our story that is very important this week um, as to how we should treat everyone equal and fair and be kind to everyone. And we're going to learn about who Satchel Page was and what segregation had to do with him as a person. So that's your first word. Write that. Highlight it. Remember, you need the part of speech, the definition. Um, uh, the sentence, and then a synonym and an antonym that go with that, okay? All right, now let's talk about what we're, so you need to come to the school so you can get this stuff. So I'm gonna try not to give you too much tonight because I wanna talk about kind of what we're gonna be doing. So I sent home an orange book, or if I ran out of orange books, I copied the two stories. We're gonna be reading a story each week. This week is Satchel Page. Next week will be the Hindenburg. So please do not do that work because you don't know what you're doing with those things until we have read those stories. So um, your homework for tomorrow will have to do with reading Satchel Page. Um, if you have some extra time uh, tonight, you can just look at it in your orange book if you want to. Kind of predict what it might be about. You don't have to read it. Okay, so anyway, those are our reading things. And then what we're going to have, everybody came and picked up one of these pockets. It's a purple pocket. It's the only construction paper I had, so I used it. No reason to waste. So we have a packet about Satchel Page, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna read that story and then every day we're gonna go over a page in here. We would normally do these in centers with groups, but since we're at home, we'll just do one page a day and we'll go over it and then we'll work on that page that goes with the story. And then your second reading packet, which will be for our story next week, so you have two weeks worth of work in here, is called The Hindenburg. It looks like that. So I need you to keep everything in your purple pocket so you don't lose it um, and so you know where it is at all times, okay? So that's that. And then there is a whole bunch of Native American things in our pocket because that is what our social studies is going to be this week. And so I'm going to give you a little tiny bit of what I want you to do for tonight, a little tiny something to do this evening. So the first tribe we are going to talk about are the Sioux. So you need to find this paper and you need to color your little label and your three words here because we're gonna be talking about those. So if you'll get that colored, we'll be ready to use that tomorrow. And then you are going to be coming up with your own Native American name. Now I'm gonna read you a story in a minute that talks a little bit about um, a Native American story, and it has um, how this boy received his Native American name. So in your purple pocket, this, you have some Indian symbols, 
Native American picture symbols. Um, this is very similar to our hieroglyphics that we talked about. Pictures represent words. So they're pictographs and that's right there, see that? So you have one of these. So your job is to come up with your own Native American name after I read this story and to write it on the pocket of your purple folder. Now let me show you what I mean. See that? Stacy Evans is on the top and then right there in the middle I decided to call myself Strong Wolf and I use the symbol for strong and I use the symbol for wolf. And the reason I chose that is because with all the things I've gone through in my life I consider myself to be strong and then um, I have a really cool group of friends and we call ourselves the Wolf Pack. And so I'm a wolf. So I consider myself a strong wolf. I mean, I just got over COVID, right? Whoa. <laughs> anyway, so that's how you're gonna, you're gonna choose a name. And when you choose your name, it needs to represent something about you. And so you can use those picture symbols to use pictures like I did to be picking out a name or you may create your own picture to represent a word if there's not a picture on there for a word that you like, okay? So you have two assignments as of this evening for right now. One is to come up with your Native American name using your picture symbols or ones that you create, and then the other is to color your Sioux Indian paper that has your three little pictures and your, um, your here, I'll show it to you one more time, this one. Make sure you, and it says the Sioux. That's the tribe we're gonna do first, okay? And so I'm gonna read you a little story real quick. So let me put this up here. Okay, oops. Sorry, that flips when I put that up there. Okay, so this is a little story. I love this book. It's called, and I'm, you may have heard it already, The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush. Now let me tilt this down just a little bit so you can see. Okay, so this is gonna talk about where Indian paintbrushes come from, these flowers right here, which we have these in Oklahoma, and you've probably seen them. And so here's a big one on the back. So it's really cool that this story, we can you could actually see these flowers here in Oklahoma. And um, this has a story about where the Indian paintbrush come from, and it also has a story about how this boy's name changes. Okay, so here we go. I'll kind of get off to the side so you can see the book, and I'll read. It says, many years ago when the people traveled the plains and lived in circle of teepees, there was a boy who was smaller than the rest of the children in the tribe. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't keep up with the other boys who were always running and riding and shooting their bows and wrestling to prove their strength. Sometimes his mother and his father worried about him. So he was not as um, agile as the rest of the boys his age. They, his parents were kind of worried. Okay. Let me turn it this way just a little bit. Okay. But the boy who was called Little Gopher was not without a gift of his own. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of wood, and he loved to decorate smooth stones with the red juices from berries he found in the hills. The wise shaman of the tribe understood that Little Gopher had a gift that was so special. Do not struggle, little gopher. Your path will not be the same as others. They will grow up to be warriors. Your place among the people will be remembered for a different reason. So he's saying that his, his path is not the same as the other boys. He's got a different gift that he's going to have to figure out what it is. And his name is Little Gopher. So remember, that's how his name starts. In a few years, little Go when Little Gopher was older, he went out to the hills alone to think about becoming a man, for this was the custom of his tribe. And it was there that a dream vision came to him, a sky filled with clouds, and out of them came a young Indian maiden and an old grandfather. She carried a rolled up animal skin and he carried a brush made of fine animal hairs and pots of paints. See him right there? Okay, so he went out to find out what his gift was. Grandfather spoke. My son, these are the tools by which you shall become great among your people. You will paint pictures of the deeds of the warriors and the visions of the shaman, and the people shall see them and remember them forever. The maiden unrolled a pure white buckskin and placed it on the ground. 
Find a buckskin as white as this, she told him. Keep it, and one day you will paint a picture that is as pure as the colors in the evening sky. So they're telling him he's going to be painting something. And they've given him the brushes and the pot and then a white buckskin. And as she finished speaking, the clouds cleared and a sunset of great beauty filled the sky. Little Gopher looked at the white buckskin and on it he saw colors as bright and beautiful as those made by the setting sun. There she is up there. Then the sun slowly sank behind the hills and the sky grew dark and the dream vision was over. Little Gopher returned to the circle of the people. The next day, he began to make soft brushes from the hairs of different animals and stiff brushes from the hairs of horses' tails. He gathered berries and flowers and rocks of different colors and crushed them to make his paints. He collected the skins of animals, which the warriors brought home from their huts. He stretched the skins on wooden frames and pulled them until they were tight. So he's learning now how to make different colors of paint from using different things. And then he's taking the skins of animals and he's going to paint on those. And he began to paint pictures of great hunts. And you can see the Native Americans hunting the buffalo. He painted of great deeds, of great dream visions, so that the people would always remember. And just like books today, that is how we remember things. So they would remember their stories by looking at these paintings on these animal skins. But even as he painted, little gopher sometimes longed to be put aside his brushes and ride out with the warriors. But always he remembered his dream vision and he did not go with them. So he knows what his skill is and what he's supposed to be doing and he's sticking to it. Many months ago, he had found a pure white buckskin. <sighs> but it remained empty because he could not find the colors of the sunset. He used the brightest flowers, the reddest berries, and the deepest purples from rocks. And still his paintings never satisfied him. They look dull and dark. So he's practicing on these other ones before he does it on this one from his dream vision. And he can't seem to find the right um, flowers or things that they used to use to make paints with to get the colors of the sunset that he wants. I'm sure it's kind of like a sunset today. He began to go to the top of a hill each evening and look at the colors that filled the sky and try to understand how to make them. He longed to share the beauty of his dream vision with his people. Oops, sorry, that tilted a little, didn't it? Sorry. And look at the pretty sunset. And he needs the paints. But he never gave up trying, and every morning when he awoke, he took out his brushes and his pots of paints and created the stories of the people with the tools he had. So he's still trying, never giving up, persevering. One night, he lay awake. He heard a voice calling to him, because you have been faithful to the people, and true to your gift, you shall find the colors you are seeking. Tomorrow, take the white buckskin and go to the place where you watch the sun in the evening. There on the ground, you will find what you need. So somebody's telling him that he's gonna find the right flower or the right plant to make this color of the sunset that he's been wanting to make. The next evening, as the sun began to go down, little gopher put aside his brushes and went up to the top of the hill. As the colors of the sunset spread across the sky, and there, on the ground, all around him were brushes filled with paint, each one the color of a sunset. Little Gopher began to paint quickly and surely using one brush and then another. So here's all the little paint brushes filled with paint and they're all the colors of the sunset. And as the colors in the sky began to fade, Little Gopher gazed at the white buckskin and he was happy. He had found the colors of the sunset. He carried his painting down to the circle of the people, leaving the brushes on the hillside. So he left all his brushes up here and took his painting on the white buckskin. And the next day when the people awoke, the hill was ablaze with color, for the brushes had taken root in the earth and multiplied into plants of brilliant reds, oranges, and yellows. And every spring from that time, the hills and meadows burst into bloom. So the next day, all those paintbrushes turned into flowers that looked like paintbrushes. And every spring, the people danced and sang the praises of Little Gopher, 
who had painted for the people. And the people no longer called him Little Gopher, but he who brought the sunset to the earth. So that is how his name changed from Little Gopher because when you pick a name, it needs to represent you. And so once he became a very fine painter and he had brought the sunset from the sky to the buckskin, he changed his Indian name and they called him he who brought the sunset to the earth. Now, I'm gonna read you a little bit of the real part, the author's note here. And it says, the lovely red, orange, yellow, and even pink Indian paintbrush blooms in profusion throughout Wyoming, Texas, and the High Plains which is us too, and has many stories connected with its origin. The story of the Native American artist and his desire to paint the sunset was particularly meaningful to me as an artist. There are many times when I wish I could go out on a hill and find brushes filled with exactly the colors I need. Who knows? Maybe someday I will. Coincidentally, Carolyn Sullivan from Austin, Texas had recently sent me a copy of Texas Wildflower Stories and Legends a collection of articles by Ruth D. Isley, which originally appeared in the Austin American Statesman. Caroline is a teacher in the Austin area, and in 1965, his collection was made available to teachers there for use with a unit on Texas trees and wildflowers. She too had read the Blue Bonnet book and knew of my deep interest in folktale and legend. This person also wrote a story called Legend of the Blue Bonnet, which I might read to you later. The Indian paintbrush is familiar, a familiar flower to Texans, and in the book, I came across a brief and interesting account of how the wildflower got its name. I contacted Mrs. Isley, and she graciously gave me permission to use her article as the main source for my retelling of the legend of the Indian paintbrush. So this is a legend story, which means it's a story that's passed down from people to people, and it usually explains why things happen in nature. So that is... Um, that is where the author got the idea for this story. So it is based on a real flower and they turn it into a legend as to why paintbrushes um, look the way they do and grow the way they do. And that is supposedly why from the Native American people is because they used to hold paint and it helped little gopher be able to paint on the white buckskin and bring the sunset to the earth. Okay, so the reason I wanted to read you that book is because his name changed from little gopher as he got older to he who brought the, suns he who brought the sunset to his people. So that's how you decide kind of how your name is going to be on your packet here. Okay, so what I want you to do is make sure we don't want to take anything out of our packet unless it's something that we're doing. Okay, so I want you to leave everything in here. And this is where you need to keep all of your stuff so you know where it is. So one more time for your job, you need to get this out and you need to write your word in it which was segregation, which is going to go with our satchel page story. Then if you want to look at your satchel page story in your orange book and kind of make some prediction as to what you think that story will be about, you can totally do that. You need to work on color in this. And then using your Indian symbols, there's the front and there's the back. And then choose for yourself your own Native American name like mine, Strong Wolf, and I put Stacey Evans there. That way you'll have, you need to keep some of this because we're gonna be putting something else on here, but it'll have your Native American name on there. So that is your assignment for this evening. And then, um, I was gonna see if there was one other thing. Oh, yes, I'm going to show you this paper. We're gonna be doing a couple of these a day. This is a seminal word dictionary. This is in your pocket also. And I used to teach um, at Wewoka and I had some ladies that were Seminole Native Americans. They're from the Seminole tribe. And that is um, the, uh, I can't even think what I was gonna say. Oh, the, they both um, taught me how to say words in Seminole Creek. And so I have a list here and I'm gonna teach you how to say them. And I'm gonna tell you what they mean, okay? So we're gonna do number one here. And when you look at this, so number one right there, how we say that is kazuppy, kazuppy. And it means cold. So we're gonna write that on our Seminole Indian here, dictionary, and it is kazuppy and it means cold. So I want you to write that down and that is that. And so let me give you a little factor crud and then I'm gonna get on out of here. So, let me find my deal here. 
Okay, here we go. This is kind of silly, but we're going to read it. It says, in 2016, a Connecticut jury awarded a patient $1.2 million in a lawsuit against her dentist. He had damaged a nerve during a root canal operation. The damage, she claimed, made kissing painful. <laughs> so you have to decide if that's fact or cred. Did this lady actually sue her dentist because he did a root canal, which made it hard for her to kiss because it hurt her mouth afterwards? So you have to decide if that is fact or crud. Okay, so that is our fact or crud for today. Tomorrow, I also am going to be reading to you. We're going to be doing some reading. Your lessons are going to be about 30 to 35 minutes long. You have to remember, usually at school, we're going much longer than that. So whatever we're doing on here, please watch the whole video so you know exactly what you're supposed to do. Remember, this is a video, so you can pause it. Go back and look at something if you need to. Um, if you have a question, just make sure that you text me or email me or use the Remind app. We have many ways to talk to one another. You can even call me if you want to talk to me and you need to. Please feel free to do so. This is going to be an um, interesting time for all of us having to stay home, but we're going to get through it and it's going to be fine and we're still going to be learning stuff. We're still going to be having school and I will try to make it as fun as I can in this setting. So um, I love you and have a good day and remember kindness is the language everyone can hear. Bye.